Hi, welcome to the 3rd of December and to the number, the ink number 3 from this Inkvent Calendar Red Edition. So I need to search for door number 3. Where is it? Ah, okay, it is here. This will be harder because it will not fit in this frame. I like to start these videos showing the the inkvent calendar, but then this one will not fit in frame, so let's do it like this. It's not very stable, but I don't think there will be a problem. And let's open this. This little thing. And it went all inside. Uh, I have here uh, a bone folder that I brought here just to be easier to open these and to take the bottles out. The bottles on the first Inkvent calendar, the 2019, were harder to get out. These ones are not so tight in there. So this one is ash and as far as I can see it seems to be a grey ink by the this um, label and the label also says it is a standard ink so let's check this in a moment and i'll be right back so let's now see how this ink behaves the pipette just take a little bit of ink we just need three little drops one two three that last one was quite big. Put the rest of the ink back there. Let me just cap this and take this out of the way. Just to avoid stupid accidents. And let's pick up the big Victorinox knife and do this. So the ink is called Ash. And I would say it is a... like um, greenish gray ink and I believe for what I'm seeing just here I think this will be a very shading ink because there are places where it is very very light and some other places which is very very dark I know there is a lot of ink in on this paper but this is how I've been making my swatches since I started doing them, so we will see. When it's dry, I will choose pens to ink with this ink, and then we'll move on with the rest of the review. And here we have the ink, the, the ink bottle, and let's look at the, at the characteristics of, the, of this ink. So, first, let me show you how this swatch came out after dry. So you can see here uh, it has, let me maybe dim this light just a little bit. You have here a very interesting gray in a warm tone. It has really no shimmer, no, no shimmer of course. There is no real sheen has um, a specific reflex of light with different color but there is something different here on these darker parts so i would say this is kind of a brown uh, a gray mixed with a brown in the places where less ink is applied you can see it's very transparent so when i looked at this swatch it didn't really appeal to me that much because, as maybe you already know, I'm not a big fan of grey inks. Just to show you other grey inks I have, I have here the Urban Grinoise, which is a very light grey, and I this is but the lighter parts on the ash are even lighter than this. This is a cooler tone of grey, this is much warmer 
I have here Caveco Stormy Grey, a uh, Smoky Grey, sorry, and Smoky Grey, it's very similar to the Ash, but it doesn't have the brownish tone. Then we have the Mont Blanc Oyster Grey, which is warmer, I would say, than the Smoky Grey, but it really shades a lot. And so if you are looking for a shady ink, this is very good, but no, not everyone likes shading inks. I don't really love them. And this is an ink that I don't really like and I gave it away. And then I want to compare this also with the Diamine or Diamine Inkvent Calendar 2019, the number three, also day number three, it was also grey and was called Snowstorm. It is, uh, I would say the base grey is very similar, but this one has some shimmer to it, so it's different in that sense. This is a much, much simpler color and I would say it is warmer. Maybe it is the same, but it seems warmer to me. Maybe it's the silver glitter that gives it a little cooler feel. Now, I want to show you the chromatography that I made. So, here you have the Diamond Infant Calendar 2021, number 3 Ash, and you can see the... I draw a line here, then it was, I let it dry, then it was into the water, the line disappeared completely, so no ink, no water resistance, and you'll see that on the writing sample in a bit. And then on the top you have kind of a magenta and turquoise color, so it seems to be very simple. Now, let's see how this grey will work with the pens that I chose for the videos. And which pens were those? It was the Caras Fountain K. This is a pen, an interesting pen with a aluminium cap. It has a broad nib. It is a broad book nib. It has a metal section and it has this plastic Delrin material, which is quite nice. This is a pen I won in a giveaway a long time ago and it was an interesting pen. So I decided to go with this one because it has a broad nib and decided to go with another unusual pen, which was this, the Platinum Glamour, which is a kind of a strange pen. And it has a strange nib, it looks like a, a comic book or a cartoon pen and this one has a medium nib. So I decided to go with these two pens, one American, the other one Japanese. And writing with those, the results I got were these. Let's start with the Moleskine paper to have the same order as I usually do in other videos. So, with the Moleskine paper, you will see that this grey ink is actually dark enough, warm enough, and most of all, it is saturated. One thing that I don't like in uh, grey inks is how sometimes they look just like pencil writing. This doesn't look like pencil, at least to me. This looks like beautiful grey, but not um, grey but dark grey and not a washed out black. So that's something that I like. I see, you, you can see that in this in this section it was written with the Platinum Glamour and this section was written with the broad nib of the Caras. So here you can clearly see that it is darker with the Platinum Glamour, looks darker and with 
small uh, shading. But when you look with the, the, the caras, you have, here I smeared, I don't know how, but I did, and I'll tell you why. Uh, and here you see lots of shading. So it is an interesting ink in that point, if you like shading. If you don't like shading, you use it with a finer nib. If you like shading, you use it with a broader nib and you have the shading. So I think this ink is really nice. It's, I'm surprisingly liking it. Here there is some see-through or bleed-through on the paper and not a lot of feathering. So it is quite well behaved. We know that moleskin paper is not fountain pen friendly. I have here the Navigator, no, it's not Navigator that I want, I want Oxford, sorry. I have here the Oxford Optic Paper, and you can see the, this is a white paper, opposite to this Moleskine, which is a kind of a cream, and you can see much more of the shading, and the ink looks a little lighter. However, it still doesn't look like a pencil to me, there is no see-through, bleed-through, feathering whatsoever on the Oxford paper. Then we go to Navigator, copy paper, and there you can see a similar behavior. I would say that this ink is very consistent, very well behaved on paper, so I think this is really a great choice. I'm, I'm really surprised. On this paper, almost no bleed-through, except in that place that I made the swatch, so a little bit more ink and you can see it there. So it went very well. Let me also show you the heavy wash of ink that I put here on the, on the big swatch on the Rhodia paper and you can see there is some staining on the other side of the paper but it's not really a bleed through in the same sense you have a bleed through here on the Moleskine paper. So, very well behaved ink, very nice dark warm grey. It doesn't look like a washed out black and that is a great thing. Now let's finally go to the Rhodia paper and we have, this is Rhodia paper also, and what we have here is the an ink that I, I, I wrote with the Platinum Glamour as it happens with the Oxford paper, it looks a little bit lighter, so this ink always looks lighter on Rhodia and uh, Oxford paper. I made the writing, uh, the drying test, and it dries in less than 15 seconds, so it's very good. So that's why I was saying I don't know how I, I was able to smear that on this paper, maybe I picked it immediately after writing, because even after five seconds it doesn't smear that much. And then you have the water resistance test that we could see here. No water, resist no water resistance because it went all away. And here I draw this line, I let it dry, I put some drops of water and there in the places where water went you don't even see a ghost line of the line it was drawn before. So, if you want a nice looking ink in a more unusual color, yes, this is it. If you want some water resistance, forget about this ink. So, let's end this video with the, our very famous phrase. And let's do it. I will post this pen because it's really, really short, but it is lovely. And the phrase is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And you can see it looks almost like black. When it dries, we can see it is a little lighter, but when I, we write it looks like black, so it's good enough for me. Now with the caras, this, the same fox, jumps 
over the lazy dog. I think this ink flows very nicely, it feels like it's very lubricated on the paper. I think this is really, really good ink. I really enjoy it and that's it. it I think I enjoy it even more because I don't usually like grey inks and this is a very good one. So, so far I'm very happy. The ink, number three, the ash is really a nice one. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will meet again tomorrow for day four. Bye!